Hi, I'm Joseph Rittenhouse, your financial coach, your financial educator. If you have any questions, go ahead and message me on, on Facebook Messenger or on YouTube. Thank you for spending this time with me. I want to talk about the concept of, of money, what it means to me, and some of the misconceptions around that, that M word, the money word. When I was little, I had these two grown-ups and I listened to everything that they said and I thought it must be correct because I was a child and I thought grown-ups, my, my teachers, my parents, they must know everything. And I used to watch these two people, my mom and dad. Mom would be sleeping all day, dad would be working. Or dad would be sleeping all day, mom would be working. And something inside of my little kid body was saying, something's, something's not right here. This, this does not seem like what I want to do when I get older. And then those same two people, they told me that I should go to school. I went to school, and when I was in school, I thought something's, something's not right here. This is not feeling like it's something that I want to be doing, something that feels right. And the teachers told me what I should be doing, and I was looking at my teachers, and I'm thinking, I don't really want to be like them. They don't really look happy. My mom and dad don't really look too happy. My teacher doesn't look too happy. But okay, I'll keep listening to them. So then I finish this school thing and I do this J-O-B thing, this just over broke thing. I'm working at my job, I've got an alarm clock, gotta get some gas for the truck, get to work. Feel like I'm not really using my full uh, skill set there at work. And again, something inside of me is saying this job thing is not really what I think I want. The point I'm getting here, the point I'm getting to here is that that's that's always been my, my spirit. My spirit has always said, something's not right here. And to me, money, when I talk about money or I talk about real estate, I'm not talking about those things. I'm thinking about what will those things get me? And if working at Walmart, if working for an airline, if joining the military will get me what I want, which is time with my friends, my family, my spouse would give me the freedom to be with them when I want, doing what I want, with who, wherever I want, then of course I'd be doing that and I'd do it all, all out. And I found that those things are just not effective and they weren't fitting right with me and something didn't seem right about them. So when I talk about money or real estate, just take out those words and replace it with uh, freedom. Like Ty Lopez calls it, he says, their money is freedom units. The more of them you have, the more freedom you have. I would even go so far as to argue that the people who work, the nine to fivers, people who have jobs, you would actually love money more than I do. Me, people who know me, they know I'm actually quite lazy and I only want to do what I want to do. And the reason I worked so hard for five years as a bus driver and bus driver instructor was just so that I didn't have to work. Look at us right now, it's Monday afternoon, it's beautiful, the clouds are rolling in, it's like about to start raining. I'm out here learning a little, about, a little bit about different plants. I'm learning about some new trails here. And your mind right now is probably on work, on getting home, on work tomorrow. Maybe I can squeeze in my wife and kids between getting off work and getting to work tomorrow. And to me, that sounds just like crazy. That sounds like somebody who's really just, their whole life revolves around work and, and money. So let's step back here and reevaluate what it means to be loving money and thinking about money. I work hard before so that I can do this. I can work on myself, I can work on my health. It was never about money. Money was just a tool. You take your car to, to work, you go to the park. I don't really say you love cars. You probably wouldn't say that. You'd say, well, I don't really love cars. I just use the car. And so to me, money is, is like that. And it could have been Walmart, working at Walmart. It could have been joining the Air Force, anything. I would have used any of those methods to, to get to the goal. And I recommend that you have a little bit more of a humble attitude. Instead of saying, I'm probably right, I probably know, I found that one of the best ways for me to get through life was to say, I probably don't know, and I don't know. Let me find people around me who are more successful. Let me find people who are not working because they're doing what I want to do. I see them with their friends. I see them with their family. Their wife doesn't look upset. Their kids look happy. And that's what I want. So I listened to those people and I thought those people know what they're doing. And that's how I got into real estate. Let's think of it on a spiritual level as well. Be very careful that you're not using this, 
I don't love money thing as an excuse. Be careful about that because don't let people shame you for picking up a book about real estate, uh, a book that talks about financial education. Don't let people shame you for that because again, you're not doing it for the money. You're doing it because something's wrong with your life. You don't have time with your, with your family. That's why you're doing it. I noticed something, there's people who are either obsessed with making money or they denounce money altogether. And I think either one is not a, a healthy attitude to take. Let's look at it from the people who are obsessed with money. I think they forgot why they were going to go down this journey in the first place, right? They wanted time to do what they want with who they want when they want to, but they forgot about that. They lost sight of that, that goal, that it was about living the life. It was not about counting dollars and showing everyone my money. Then there's the other kind of people. They want to denounce everything. I want to, I don't want to be a part of the system. I want to get very spiritual. Both were not very healthy. If you read texts like the Bible or the Bhagavad Gita, they talk about the love of money is evil, is not healthy. Not money. Money is a tool. The Gita, the Bhagavad Gita, which is uh, Eastern philosophy, talks about doing your duty. You use money to do your duty. The way I see it, when I make money, I'm doing my duty. I'm learning about things. I'm sharing things with you. To me, that's my duty. And I don't think of it as, as work. I don't think of it as, ev as evil. I just use the money. Someone told me the other day, they said, think of yourself as being like a bank teller at a bank. The bank teller works at the bank. They've got millions of dollars coming through their hands every day but the bank teller wouldn't say that they were a wealthy person. And I feel the same way. I don't feel like any of this money is mine. I just, I just use the money to, to, to use what facilities God gave me. God gave me two hands and two legs and you don't give your children a gift and then you're not happy when you see them take that gift and they just put it in the closet and they say, no, I don't want gifts. I don't accept gifts. I don't wanna, I don't wanna use gifts you'd be a little bit disappointed. God gave me two hands, gave me the ability to read, to write, to make videos, to travel. That's doing my duty, like the Gita, and that's being a, a useful tool for God, like in the Bible. 